people around the world are increasingly being affected by mining and other development activities taking place on or near their ancestral lands. These people are often unaware of what their rights are in these situations or what options they have for dealing with companies, NGOs and governments who approach them with potential projects to develop or conserve their lands. Lusoke Dene First Nation is gaining increasing experience interacting and negotiating with developers and conservationists alike and have a great deal of knowledge and lessons to share. If you have a, a right of any sort, you should uh, stick with it and don't let them take control of your lives or uh, let them con uh, destroy your animals or water or air or fish. If you have a livelihood, you have to uh, protect it and that if you protect that, that would be a savings for your future generation. Through our, my experience with the mining company, with BHP and other uh, old, uh, mining companies, is that they come to our land, they take all the wealth out of the communities and give us just a little bit. And they provide, they say they provide training, uh, uh, employment, business, from my experience, there's little that uh, is shown here in the community. So you have to negotiate something that is going to benefit you and make that negotiation work. Not only that work, but you got to make the agreement work. Yeah. be sad if the caribou don't come here because that's where we live on. And the fish is starting to dip warm right now. Mm -hmm. So we really we gotta really think about it and because you know once you spoil the land you can't replace it. Mm -hmm. Just think of your children and your grandchildren the future. If it was my choice I wouldn't go for it. The money's always be there. You can replace it with money. Mm -hmm. So Oh, that's all I gotta say about that. I got it. Oh, 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 all I can say that uh, as a community, people put their heads together and negotiate carefully, well planned, with all community involvement. Mm -hmm. For the benefit for our, the community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that everybody get a fair share and everybody has a say mm -hmm. in about the mining mm -hmm. or the companies. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we, we're we here to live here for life. We're not moving any place. We, we will continue living out here with our children and for children to come. Uh, 
how this boy was I would lake in Manitou Lake, I was trapping a place south from Tutsa Bay here, the most of the people used to go fishing. Now they can't go hunting over there and they can't go fishing and they've been spoiled over the lake, the whole polluted, the fish is polluted. And then I hope it doesn't happen again to this mining across to try to make hydro there from Nanichu. In the future I hope some other communities will think about what what we lost out south side of uh, Slave Lake, uh, Great Slave from here. It could happen to the north side of the Great Slave Lake in the future. If they don't talk about it, we gotta make a deal with this. Big, that's a big issue for this, all the communities along Northwest Territories. Well, the companies, they hold things back. They don't, they want to jump on things right away, but later they hold things back. They don't, they don't explain to the communities right away. I've been living all, all my life here. And I know a lot about mines, of meetings with them. It's good for the young people, the younger generation, to know what's happening. They know they get the benefit. It's be good to see the young people get the benefit from any kind of mines would be operating in your hometown, around your area where you're living. And that's just all I want to say. Not too long ago, we uh, we had uh, a group of people from the outside, uh, the mining industry, that uh, come onto uh, our traditional lands, and they, they wanted to mine diamonds. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we asked of them was that they'd uh, have to come to the community and uh, talk to the elders, the youth, and listen to what uh, might be the possibly the best way to, uh, if it's going to be mined, then there's some benefits that uh, is attached, attached to it. Uh, it. There has to be a proper consultation. Uh, people have to uh, consent to it. And I think that's the, the proper way to, to go about doing these things. So, uh, I guess it's uh, to Two people work together. I think that's that's how I uh, be with. It. And I think uh, I think that people that live there, uh, such as ourselves, you know, we we're, we hunt. You know, we live off the land. You know, if somebody's going to come onto the land, then we're going to have to benefit it. You know, we're going to do this employment and you know, business, and so forth. People want to get educated, training, uh, scholarships. Sometimes we go out in the land uh, a couple times a year, and all these things uh, have to be taken into consideration. I think the uh, First Nations, I think, uh, uh, you know, we're drawing up an agreement. Uh, if you do an agreement, then these things have to be very careful at how these are uh, being put together. Some of these things, you know, they're pretty crafty, how they put in those words. So uh, those things I have always had to be cautioned. Uh, I think uh, if people want to work together, I think that's that's the only way to, you know, to, to go about doing things these days. Let's work together, and that's that's how you're going to you're going to achieve things. I know uh, in the beginning when we these people came in, we were quite concerned about the environment. And <clears throat> looking at that today, uh, I know there's uh, the technology, you know, where we 
there's things can be done uh, to lessen the impact on the environment. There's ways that that can be done. And, and ourselves, we're looking at hydro, you know, because uh, we know uh, the mines are using diesel across uh, across the lake, and it's not very good for the caribou. So we're saying, well, let's go look at hydro. We got the rivers. So all, all those things, you know, you can uh, think about and work together. And, uh, and I think uh, the business, I think uh, the first choice, uh, I think, is the Aboriginal people. They should uh, be given that opportunity. You know, after all, it's, it's their land. I think that they should, they want to benefit, you know, for their children. Children, and that's that's what it's all about. <laughs> And you said, Yamata Hekesa, and that's on. There's no Sardinism. And you had a razon. Yama had no other idea. She bit the end. What came out strongly and clearly was that Indigenous peoples insist they are not another stakeholder to be consulted. They are rights holders whose identity, autonomy, and cultural survival is inextricably linked to their relationship with the land. Dene communities have dealt with mining companies in the past and have experience that can be shared with other communities that are in the process of negotiating with mining companies. Because you can negotiate for two or three years, come up with an agreement, but then at the end the agreement has to work for you so that uh, the people that you represent benefit from the agreement. Just for an example, some agreements we had negotiated a number of years ago, although we have an agreement, there's nothing working for us. So you have to work on the negotiation when it's completed, that you have to implement it, implement it. and always uh, push so that you're in charge. Uh, don't let them uh, control you, which they try to do with us in, regard, in regards with money. They try to di uh, divide us and uh, you have to be in control all the time and also protect what you have and what is originally yours in the first place. You have to uh, exercise your tree right, your ab aboriginal rights and uh, any other rights that you have. And when you do get the impact benefits money, sometimes there's division among the communities. You gotta watch that, so that would be uh, the mining strategy, I guess, where they try to divide people, and at the end, the division would result in uh, little things or little power given to the communities. Hey, uh, hey. To, to people is uh, the mining company would do just about anything to get the minerals and taking out the earth for diamonds and I say watch these people these people are if they got money they can break just about anything there is to break so keep an eye out for them guys, for the mining company. I would uh, say that they need to probably sit with their local governments and their government of the country to sit with them and make sure that all the benefits, the impacts that's going to be coming 
to them before they do the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, mm -hmm. that usually takes place too. So I think uh, the government needs to give a, make sure the people get a percentage, a great percentage of the, the royalties, I guess, because the government here is gaining all the royalties over there and we're not. We're still the poor Dena people here, mm -hmm. while our government is getting all the, the, and they're the decision makers. So I think we need to have them at our table, put them at your table and meet with them and say, this is what I want, mm -hmm. or do not give it. When you guys go going through your negotiation, it's always good to have a public work, work dog. Watchdog? We have watchdog. These people are, they pretty much tell you the truth. These are the guys here. This is our representative that actually comes to our community to update us. And his name is Tim Byers. They are very useful people. And another thing is always to get, um, when you get their, it's called financial statement or security that they put in to make sure that if they don't clean it up, that the, the government, well, Canada government, they have they hold this money to make sure that if the mine didn't clean it properly, that they'll have money to clean it up. They won't have to tax people. Mm -hmm. yeah, secure the project. It's always good Excellent. when it comes to reclamation. Um, for the youth, um, just keep your eyes open and your ears and just Go to as much public meetings, get yourself educated about this because they're not going to come to your school and be, do big presentations. And this is what we're Inform the youth more so they can make reasonable, logical decisions when when they when they're sitting in the seats when the mine is closed. Because mm -hmm. right now it wasn't a part of negotiation, but when 15 and 10 years will probably be sitting in the seats when it closes. Mm -hmm. yes. First of all, they gotta meet with the community without the mining people and just community concerns and including the youth and elders and everyone. Um, they really gotta think about what they're gonna be doing and Every concern is a big concern, so you know, if the youth has a question, you know, they are the future. So, um, yeah, they really got to think about what, what, the, what the effects are in the future, because it's going to, it might spoil the land and the animals. Both parties are, are, are negotiating is is to uh, give uh, each other a chance to uh, to, to say their their part and, and and I think the other thing is that um, if the tr translation is going to be a problem, uh, we've got to make sure that uh, uh, things are are said simply as possible so translation is always is always easier than. The other thing is the important thing that we that we learned from the first uh, idea um, negotiations with uh, BHP was that uh, uh, when you're talking about money, so we, we didn't realize that how much money uh, BHP makes. I think they make more than a uh, million dollar a day on, on their diamond mine. And, and when we were negotiating, we uh, were negotiating only for uh, one million dollar to this community for one year. So, so when you're negotiating, it's always, I think it's important to, to understand how much they make out of the mine or out of the development that you're involved with so that way you can negotiate your monetary according to your risk. Well, 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 well. The first negotiation was mine, a lot of things we miss. And also the same as the David too. And the third one's coming up, the beers. But we're still working on that one again. When I say negotiation, this is for ourselves. 
uh, we, we've got a wildlife committee here too in case the Nessotian and Corporation next door. It used to be only one before. Just a, just a chief and council does everything before. But it's too much, so we, we have to split. We have to put up a, we'll make a wildlife board. Then they work on a different too, like a land, straight land, anything, like a mining people, caribou, things like that. It's supposed to go to wildlife. For the money side, how are you going to make money? How the money is going to go to Schutz and Gay? We, we, we had that Dunasonsling Corporation, which is that one. Since about a couple of years we did that. And then here, Band Council, Achievement Council, a lot of things like uh, politics. Mostly we do only that now. So, which is good for us now? If we're going to go through the mining, we've got a wildlife people. Them, they got to make a, a deal and they'll say whatever I said here today, but they, they come back to us, to report to us. That's what we're doing. Same thing done so here. So, which is work good now, it's starting to be good now. the best way you can. Use your heart. God, let your heart guide you the way. Don't use your mind. It's best to use your heart because you're going to be living there with the mindings around you. You have to be strong, be positive, think for the next generation, think for yourself, think for everybody. I would have to say, make sure you guys are, who's going to be negotiating, make sure they're well educated and that you attend almost every meetings and just deal with them in full force. <laughs>